Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to make a hunk of aluminum go from this to this. All right, let's get this out of the way up front. I am a novice when it comes to making fixture plates. In fact, this fixture plate that we're looking at today is really only my second attempt at doing this, and the first attempt was an utter failure. Not in that it wouldn't hold parts, it's just that the size, everything about it was wrong. The, the way that I was doing the material, the length of time it was gonna to take to cut everything, the whole thought process was wrong. <clears throat> and I don't necessarily mean wrong, it wasn't optimal. Right? Some of it was wrong because, well, I am working in a very small work envelope. I'm doing this on the Tormach 440, not the big old house behind me. And so, the 440's work envelope, X and Y, is 10 inches by six and a quarter. Remember, that means that's the maximum your tool can move. Right? So when I made the first uh, fixture plates, I actually made it the full work envelope size, thinking I'd just drop it in place, so everything would be fine. Not a good move, right? Um, in fact, I was about 50 set, or what, it was 47 thousandths uh, off in every direction. And, um, not off, but I exceeded the maximum travel by 47 thousandths, which meant I got to start over. Could have done some subset of it, but really, I wouldn't have gotten that many. I would have gotten two more uh, handles per run, but it was set up to run uh, for one side only. And so what I did was I tried to optimize the, um, the design a little bit here, and let's, let's talk about it. Now this one, has no less than six errors that I can count, right? Six you know, things wrong with this one. But this is the one that I'm gonna to use to prove my code out and make sure everything works. I can make adjustments to the, the, the cam on this one and I'll make another one that's completely right. I might make a couple of them that are completely right and this one is just my, you know, my test. So the first thing is let's look at the bottom. All right, so looking at the bottom, you'll see we have handles now. I didn't have that on, on the last version. Uh, many thanks to the team out at Autodesk. Um, <clears throat> if you guys aren't aware, I know, um, you know many of you know this, I use Fusion 360 for everything that I do. My, my, uh, even when I'm doing fabrication, I do it all in Fusion. Um, every week they have a weekly hangout. Um, it's had different names over the years um, fast tracks and hangouts or whatever but basically every Friday and actually I think they do them on Wednesdays too so your real basic ones on Wednesdays your more advanced ones on Fridays right um, but uh, so Tim Paul um, Tim Tim's an awesome guy and he did a, uh, a webinar the other day on uh, fixturing which was perfect timing because I was trying to figure out what the heck I was gonna do for this and um, one of the things he does is he puts those these little cutouts in here. Now he gets really fancy, does these like 3D, you know, finger grip kinds of things. I just needed to be able to get it on and off easily, right? Um, the other thing here is you'll see there are three three holes here. Now these are not, uh, this one's a through hole, but these two are not. So these are locating pins, right? Three, it's locating pins. Drop it in. I was able to, you know, <clears throat> take it off, repeat, you know, back and forth, uh, and I'm, you know, tense. You know, without having to make any big change. This through hole is what's gonna bolt it in place. Right? I was going to put uh, multiple uh, bolts, but I just don't have the space. And if I find that I'm having problems with anything pulling, I've got um, pit bolt clamps that I used when I made this uh, that I can clamp on the outside if I really need to, uh, to give me a little bit more downward force. But I don't think I'm gonna need it because this one just doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of forces that are gonna be pulling it in that direction and flexing it. Um, let's talk about the top, and then we'll go into actually making it. Uh, this is a long video, I know. Uh, I might try and uh, superimpose some of these things so that there's machining happening while I'm talking. I don't know yet. So, looking at the top, and so from your perspective looking at it, this is uh, so my origin is right here in the middle. Um, your Y travel, X travel. These risers here will support four blanks for the handles. There's a, um, a center that are talon grips, 
Here's our you know first big mistake in here. That's way too deep. I did my math wrong. So I'm gonna have to bring that up, uh, use some spacers and, and bring those back up to the right height. On the outsides, we've got uh, pit bull clamps, uh, knife edge pit bull, pit bull clamps. And then these are for dowel pins so I can uh, locate it. So I'm gonna use um, multiple work offsets on this one. So we'll have four work offsets here. When this side is done, it gets flipped over um, and the other side is done uh, at the same time. All right, so other than the very first run, I should always be pulling four complete handles off this pallet every time I run it. What's really nice though is that the tools that I use in my order of operations matches the other side. Right? It's not exact. I don't use every tool for the second op, but the tools that I use are in the exact same order. So I can go ahead and run this whole thing at one time and it's going to run the pallet and, and go from there. It doesn't, doesn't add any extra tool changes for me. On this side, what we have is a really loud air compressor. It's really annoying. All right, so we're looking at the handle side here. Um, we're going to use machinable pit bull clamps uh, for these because basically the, uh, the handle registers... Do I have a handle here? Hang on. Well, got one here, right? Um, the handle itself, right, that shape, it's gonna register in here and hold it aligned perfectly, right? So I should be able to pick up, uh, for each of these spots, pick up my origin uh, for that and be able to run it. So really what I need to do, I just need something that's gonna provide some force holding it both into that pocket and then down. Right? I don't want it uh, pulling out of the, of the uh, fixture. So, uh, many thanks to those of you on Instagram who uh, chimed in on what to do for that one because that part was really um, really causing me some concern on, on what I was going to do. So um, yeah, that's that's the basics of this fixture. And I'll go over the uh, mistakes. Let's see, because I just I posted a pop quiz the other day about the mistakes, and there are six. So looking at this, let's see. So I already pointed out. The first one is that this was too deep. It was also uh, about one, one and a half thousandths too narrow because even though the print says one inch here, uh, the actual um, uh, talon grip clamps, the one inch clamps were one inch one thousand. So, yeah. Um, so, read of that. When I did it, for whatever reason, I don't know what the heck I did. My Oh, I know what the problem was. I had, uh, I had elevated this so I could do my drilling operation here. And apparently the material that I used was, uh, it's U, um, UHMW, and it wasn't the same heights. So it was up a little higher on this side, and so now I get this great thing, you know, my floor here is messed up. It was perfect like these earlier. Uh, let's see, so that's three right there. Uh, these chamfers, again, because that height was wrong, these chamfers came out wrong, that's number four. I spot drill where I wasn't supposed to, that's actually the flip side, this pin. So I, I guess when I was selecting all these drill holes, I accidentally selected that one as well, and I shouldn't have. And then lastly, when uh, the quarter inch tool that I used uh, to do the finish pocketing and, and finish uh, the roughing and pocketing in here, um, apparently I changed the tool in the holder and didn't change the offset, and it was 50 thousandths longer. So my floor on all this is wrong, right? Um, it also changed this depth, which I'm okay. I had it at 50 thousandths. It's now at 100 thousandths. And frankly, I think the 100 thousandths is, um, is better uh, depth with that. So that's easy enough to fix. But yeah, so all these things are wrong with this fixture, but it doesn't prevent me from using it. Right? And this is what I wanted to, to drill home. Uh, you know, just because something's not perfect, it's not jewelry, um, doesn't mean you can't still use it. Right? You can still get out and use this stuff and, and make it happen. Um, so that's the plan. Like I said, I'm going to use this one, prove out my code. Eventually, I'll make a couple of prettier ones that have all the right um, heights in there. But this gave me an opportunity to make sure that my, my thought process was working correctly. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me um, fumble my way through making this fixture plate. I, you know, frankly, I think it came out okay. I'm, I'm actually really proud of this thing. Even you know, with all its flaws, I still think that this is a pretty good setup. And I think this is going to make life a whole lot easier for me and speed up uh, my machining uh, time quite a bit. 
Um, thanks again uh, for everybody out on uh, social media who uh, comments and likes and subscribes and all that good stuff. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a challenging year, but uh, things are going all right, and I just I really appreciate you guys, and I appreciate the feedback. Um, you know, I've never once asked for help and not gotten good constructive feedback, and so um, I'm really really pleased about that. It's it's pretty amazing. It's an amazing group. Speaking of, it's time for me to head out west. I, I am heading out to California this week. I'll be at uh, Barzi Industrial. We've got the, the, uh, the summer bash going on there. Um, lots of classes happening that, uh, that week, or I'm sorry, those two days. It's, it's now two days of classes. It used to just be um, on Saturday, but there are um, events happening on Friday, events happening on Saturday. I will be live streaming all day on Saturday on Stan's channel, on the Barzi Industrial channel, not on my own. Um, so you catch up with me there. We'll have um, some video of the different classes that are going on uh, for both days. I'll, I'll have a recap from, from Friday, uh, playing at different times throughout the day as it gets slower here and there, um, lunchtime and stuff like that. Uh, different awards, prizes, uh, you don't have to be present to win everything. There's a couple of prizes that you can uh, you can get uh, through the website, but there are or uh, you can sorry there's tickets you can get through his website, um, or through his. If you go look at his channel, he's got it listed. There's also a Facebook page for uh, for it. Most of the prizes are you know you have to be present uh, to to enter and win because they are door prizes. Um, yeah, we'll have the hot seat there, though. Uh, we'll get to interview all your favorite creators. If you have questions, things you want me to ask people, send me a note. Let me know. It's tom at inspirationmetalworks.com. Right? Send me an email. Let me know ahead of time what you want me to ask people. I will compile that list and try and do that because uh, the creators that are going to be there will have uh, certain times of the day where they're going to come in and be able to um, sit down. We'll do quick little interviews. But really, it's meant to give you, the viewer who's not there, uh, and, and you know, direct access to uh, to these folks because there's some pretty impressive people, right? I mean, it's just amazing. You get guys like uh, Tom Lipton and Adam Booth and Keith Fenner, uh, John Saunders will be there, um, Bruce uh, uh, Bruce Witham from uh, uh, Gemtrek in Australia. He's he's over. Um, I mean, there's just so many people. I, I, Go check out the, the Facebook page, right? Bars the Industrial Summer Bash 2017. Check that out. You'll see the list of everybody. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll get a, a chance to interact with everyone. Um, it's going to be a busy day for me, I can tell you that. Um, with that, I think I'm going to call it a wraps. It is uh, the weekend of Father's Day, which is actually my birthday. So I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to keep working today. I'm gonna, you know, take take the weekend off. And actually, um, the seventeenth is my wife's birthday, so um, you know, we're we're trying to trying to enjoy the weekend a little bit. So I'm gonna call this a wrap. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have comments, um, you wanna laugh at my mistakes, I'm okay with that too. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.